Hey everybody, on today's video I'm going to go over the history of the iron boots, the health shoes. I'm also going to get into how to clean it up, how to use them, how to find them if you want to get a pair for yourself. And then I'll get into how to use them using a classic, a vintage York leg developing course. If you watch the most recent episode of Home Gym History, my podcast that's produced by Garage Gym Radio. Then you heard me reference this video, and you already know a little bit about these iron boots. If you didn't watch it, then check the description, because I'll drop a link for it here on YouTube. You can also just search for Home Gym History on Spotify and Apple. Please drop a comment on this video, and let me know if you like Home Gym History, and if you want to see more historical content here on Vintage Weights PGH. Before getting to some old strength and health magazines and to that York leg developing course, let me tell you a little bit about how to find iron boots and health shoes, the best search terms, and some advice on cleaning them up. To get started, how do you find these things? They come as an extra kind of add-on sometimes with weight pickups that I have, but if you're looking for these specifically, you've got to realize that there's several different titles over the years for them. So use those different titles because people that aren't completely in the home gym community or not into vintage weights probably are just going to post what they see on the item. So search for iron boots, that was often printed on them. Search for health shoes, Search for Iron Health Shoes, search for York Shoes, Billard Shoes, Dan Lurie Shoes, all the different company names with shoes. Don't be surprised if the algorithm starts sending you advertisements for all numbers of different boots and shoes. I've been seeing so many ads recently everywhere I go online for boots and shoes because of my search for these. However, they are fairly easy to find. Just on eBay this morning, I found all kinds of different pairs ranging from $25 up to someone asking a couple hundred dollars for certain ones. I'd advise though that you don't get overly concerned with the straps. Very often you'll find that these are listed without straps or maybe there's straps missing. Like for example, these Weeder health boots that I bought recently only came with two straps. The reason that I advise you not to be concerned with the straps is that they're crap. <laughs> they were probably pretty good once upon a time, but 50 years later, I find that the metal clasps, whether they were once, you know, sturdy or not, are so bent and busted or rusted that I wouldn't want to deal with them. And the straps themselves, these are actually, on these weeders, pretty pliable. But the straps that originally came with my York Health shoes were very brittle. And not only would I not want to tie those onto my feet and my ankles, and especially on the upper strap, have that rubbing against my ankles, the brittle, nasty canvas, but it also didn't make me feel that safe whenever I'm swinging these overhead. So I reached out to Belt Fed Strength. Chris and Randy, Belt Fed Strength. If you don't follow them on Instagram, you're missing out. Whether you want a new belt or any kind of leather goods or not, oh my gosh, Weird Angle Wednesday, that'll get your day started. So go follow Belt Fed Strength on Instagram and check out beltfedstrength.com because not only do they make cool things like these custom leather straps for my health shoes, but they're known for their belts. They're lifting belts. They have some casual work attire type belts as well. They make custom belts, custom colors, some various lettering on there. I have a belt in the works with them that I can't wait to see what they come up with. And they also have some other products that you might be interested in. Check them out. It is a cool family owned, made in the USA, company that I couldn't support more. They do great things out there, so check out BeltFedStrength.com. Now, back to what we were talking about. Whether you get BeltFedStrength leather straps 
for your health shoes or not. I believe Chris said that they'd be about 40 bucks if you want to get a set for yourself. You can go to the craft store. You can make your own if you want. I just wanted something a little better because I had a feeling I was going to like these and I wanted to, you know, get the best option possible. But you could get new canvas and make your own. Now you've got them. You've got some straps. How do you clean them up? I have not seen, this is peculiar, I have not seen many rusty or like, you know, completely repainted versions of these. Almost all the pairs that I find and that I see online are original paint, either red or black, depending on the brand, and in fairly good condition. I'm not sure if this is because a lot of people just bought sets of weights. You know, they got the Big 12 Special from New York and then these went by the wayside and got stuffed in a corner. Or maybe it's just that the natural use of these doesn't mean they're getting that banged up. They're strapped to your feet, you swing them around. You're not really slamming them on the floor, or at least you shouldn't be. You're not clanging them off each other, or at least you shouldn't be. You'll see in some videos coming up that that happens sometimes, especially with my <laughs> learning curve. So, I don't really know for sure why these are in such good condition so often, but it helps us. It helps you. So in terms of restoration, make yourself some straps, buy yourself some straps, hit these with some 3-in-1 oil if they're not covered in rust, Wipe them down, and you're ready to rock. Actually, you're not. If you're going to really follow the leg developing course that I'll mention in a minute, you need to find yourself some dumbbell handles. What I'm talking about would be these. So you need to find some standard one inch steel dumbbell handles. These came as 14 inch long rods with some of the early York sets. They were reduced down to nine inch rods so that you didn't have to take apart your dumbbells and then put them back together for your health shoes. You could have two separate sets and you need the corresponding collars as well. Two sets of them, one for each shoe. Then if you're really going heavy, you need to start getting some standard plates, but don't get discouraged at this point you don't need a ton. The heaviest that I've gone so far would be 25 pounds on each foot. What that comes out to would be two 10 pound plates. So honestly, if you really got into these, if you became heavily involved with iron boots, you could get by with four two and a halfs, four five pounders, and four 10 pounders. In your home gym, that equates to just a small stack of weights in the corner with your health shoes sitting next to them, and voila, you have a whole new segment of exercises and lifts for your home gym. Go out there and find these if you get into the health shoes, but I would suggest just starting out with the health shoes. They're five pounds each typically, maybe you know one or two pounds less, however, depending on brand. And that's the best way to start, even according to the leg developing course by York, Start out with just the bare shoes on your feet, and you'll see that in this video, I didn't have much luck trying out exercises because they were too heavy. Now, I'll show you more to do with the exercises in a minute, but first, let's look at those old Strength and Health magazines that I mentioned. If you're unaware, York Barbell published Strength and Health magazine and frequently advertised in it because it was their own publication. This one's from 1938, April 1938. And take a look at the ad in here for the York Iron Boot. It says, the most sensational development since the barbell. You'll see that this original design was quite thicker. It's similar to my Weeder Iron Boot with this top portion and the thicker design than what would come later. If you take a look at the York, York Health shoe that I have, see the difference in thickness. However, 
unlike this weeder version, the original York had a key in the back that you would tighten to lock the dumbbell in place. So you'd step onto the dumbbell and then tighten the key in the back. Now, as we go through the years, we start to see, and this is from a 1941 Strength and Health, the complete York Home Gymnasium, as well as other sets like the Big 12 Special and the Big 10 Special, 7-in-1, 5-in-1. And the other interesting thing about this particular advertisement is that we see that rather than going across the shoe, the bar is placed perpendicular to the shoe. And that's something that sometimes people don't think about that was originally designed. And if we look at this 1942 Strength and Health, 1942 June issue, we see how most people think of them. So in this perfect physique for $12, most people think of the bar going across this way, but you can put the bar through that top hole. You might also notice the design change when we get up into the 40s, that rather than having just this big gaping hole in the top toe, we have, it's a little hard to see in this particular ad, but there's a circle with two lines going across it. Here's the classic John Grimmick posing on the February 1947 issue. And if we look at this issue in 1947, we have in the York Big 12 special, the modern shoes that I have. And I shouldn't say modern, but the most recent development in York Health shoes. These are called York Health boots. In between the iron boots terminology and health shoes, there are a couple different phrases that York used. They're up here as well. And they go to these four holes and you slide the barbell or the dumbbell handle through. This effectively eliminates that vertical possibility in the design. You might also notice with the Big 12 Special that it comes with all of these course books to include the leg developing course, which we'll get into in just a minute. And then just to show you a couple other cool things, this is from an April 1950 issue. And by now, in 1950, we've got the leg press machine being advertised. We've got the deep knee bend stands being advertised. And then from a 1960 issue, take a look here at this ad. These are the health shoes that I just mentioned, but now the big difference is York is offering an iron version as usual, but also an aluminum version. And then they're also offering, in addition to the men's aluminum version, a ladies aluminum version. So they're diversifying the product in the 1960s. And last but not least, just to show you some other options becoming available in the 19, late 1950s and 1960s that would be the downfall of the health shoes, in my opinion. It would be things like the leg extension. Because although you can't do a diverse amount of exercises on the leg curl and extension machine, arguably the two major exercises for the York Health Shoe are accomplished on it in a more sturdy and stable manner. And this is from Iron Man and the Marcy Company. But let's get into those diverse exercises. The York Leg Developing Course was copyrighted in 1943, but as evidenced by this inside cover picture from 1950, it was produced many times over the years. There's Sigmund Klein on the back inside cover. So the first couple pages go into this lengthy introduction that you can almost hear Bob Hoffman's voice from York Barbell 
and they're selling the product basically. They're they're arguing that everything from Babe Ruth not having to retire if he just used York Health shoes and York Iron Boots and strengthened his legs, all the way through famous boxer Jack Dempsey maybe being able to win his famous fight against Gene Tunney if his legs were stronger and he was faster. So as you can see, this is some dense reading to start out. It's very different than modern day courses you might buy, whether it's a PDF, an online course, or an actual book that have a ton of illustrations. Part of the reason for this is that the courses would come with posters. So you had most of your illustrations on a poster that came with it. This is the York Leg Course poster that came with this York Leg Developing Course. However, if you spend the time, like I did, and you read through, there's some very interesting information. And the constant theme is just this quote that Hoffman keeps using over and over again, that a man is as good as his legs. There's a bigger illustration of the York Health Boot, one of the only ones in the course book. You do get eventually to the actual course and the various exercises of the course. The easiest way I can describe it would be that the course is divided up into 20 exercises. 10 of those would be upper body exercises, not mentioned in here, but then 10 of them, the actual lower body exercises, leg developing course exercises. They provide more than 10, as evidenced even on the poster, but that's by design so that you can choose essentially your top five. So the course is split up into chunks, if you will, of five. And Hoffman suggests in the course that you should train in a general way if you're a beginner for about two months before specializing. But then the way that it's divided of those 10 leg exercises, the course advises doing five with a barbell. So that's why this is actually written as two courses. Course number one are the standing exercises with a barbell, and I guess technically a lying exercise whenever you're doing leg press. And then course number two is the health boot, or this is old enough to be called the iron boot exercises. And those are further divided. The nice part about these being divided by standing and lying is that it points out in the course, and I would agree, that once you strap on your iron boot, it's cumbersome to be taking it on and off. So you want to do a compound lift, if you will. And the course advises that, that once you strap on the boot, just keep it on and do all five exercises for that set. So you can alternate one week doing these five exercises, which I'll show you in a moment, and then the next week doing these five, if you want, with the health boot, or you can just be consistent with one or the other. If you wanted, you could mix and match. It's not that big of a deal to stand up or sit down, but the point to really drive home is just that you wanna concentrate your iron boot exercises in your training to one area of it, and that area, even though it's not expressly written this way, I would just say it is as accessories. The main lifts, even in the course, are the barbell lifts. That's where you're going heavy. And then the accessory lifts come next. In terms of days of the week, it's a optimally five-day program. What Hoffman lays out is the York Heavy and Light program, five-day program, and just before the exercises on page eight, he tells you on page six and seven that, let me look at my notes here, <laughs> you should have Monday and Wednesday as your general exercise day. However, he later explains that no lower body exercises should be done on those days. So effectively, it's an upper body, lower body split, that Monday and Wednesday are upper body, and then Tuesday and Thursday are leg days. So you're going four days straight. Friday's a rest day. And then Saturday is essentially a heavy day where 
Hoffman writes that you should lift more than you've ever lifted in those exercises. So <laughs> he, he wants you, and I'm chuckling a little bit because by modern standards, this is a little wild. He, he's saying go for a PR, essentially, every Saturday. I don't know if that's advisable. I'm not a trained, you know, physical trainer. I'm not certified in any way. But the way I read it, that's what he describes. Now, to uh, optimize your training, there is a rest day on Friday and Sunday. And he also mentions that you can lower this down, that if you do physical labor for an occupation, that you are welcome to bring this down to a three-day program. Or he says if you do heavy physical labor as an occupation, you can even get away with two days a week with your your Big 12 special, of course. He makes an interesting uh, comparison to opium smoking at one point in the book. And he that has to do with progressive overload. And he talks about how a beginning opium smoker might only need two pipes, but that, uh, you know, the analogy says something to the effect that a, an experienced opium smoker might need up to 50 pipes a day. I, I, I just point this out because, you know, in the 1940s and 50s, <laughs> That might have been an applicable way to describe something, but I can't imagine today drug use being used as the way to describe how you should best train. But it does drive the point home that essentially, as you get stronger, you're going to need to do more to get the same effect. And I think that's what he was going for with all the opium smoking references. And then getting into the actual exercises, course one... I'll explore the barbell exercises in a later video. So I'll mainly be concerned in this video with the iron boot exercises. And let's take a look at some of those. As you could probably tell, the leg spread was a little awkward, but I could really feel it. That's why I was laughing. I don't normally do that movement. Up next is one of the most effective exercises, yet one of the hardest to pull off. Deceptively difficult, in my opinion. It's riding an imaginary bicycle. This is on the cover of the leg developing course. And personally, I didn't think it looked that hard. Like, yeah, just lay down, pump your legs in the air. However, when I tried it, and you can even see in this video, because this is one of the first times I tried it, it's much more difficult than it looked. Ooh. Exercise number six is called the biceps curl, which threw me for a loop until I read it. And then, quote unquote, it says, this is the exercise for which the iron boot was especially designed. You've got my interest, Bob Hoffman and York Barbell. How in the world are we using this for biceps? It says, in barbell exercises and lifting movements, the huge thigh biceps. Oh of the legs receive little direct exercise. It is in action in the stiff leg deadlift and some of the lifting movements most of all. So what they're talking about are your hamstrings and they're talking about a leg curl, but they call it a biceps curl. I've never seen that before. If you've ever seen that, if, if you're an old timer or a you know, knowledgeable person on classic lifts, then drop a comment and let me know. It's the first time I've heard of the hamstrings called the thigh biceps. And 
Let's take a look at it. Here's the biceps curl, both standing and on the ground. On the ground, I just want to point out my the edges of my kneecaps uh, really didn't feel that great. So I might put like a yoga mat or some type of cushioning there uh, on the floor if I were to do it on the floor. The most stable that I felt though was whenever I was leaning up against the upright and what I did was I just had my thigh, my quads if you will, against the upright and that kept me pretty stable. For me, that's what worked. So those are the exercises that are laid out. The five iron boot exercises that are standing and the five that are on the floor. I don't know why I just went like this for standing instead of on the floor. However, what I do know is that the sets and reps were a little hard to figure out. Sets weren't mentioned at all. So after reading it a couple times, uh, the best I can decipher is that you don't do multiple sets. You just work your way through the five, just one set each. In terms of reps, it cautions in the program that you shouldn't go above 12, and whatever you do, don't go to 15 reps, which I found to be amusing. Like, don't do 12, but definitely don't do 15. So if you're going to be naughty, 13 or 14, you know, you can get away with it. The optimal reps that they mentioned, though, were 10. So that's what you should do. Five exercises, 10 reps each. If you think about it, that's closing out, you know, a leg day workout with 50 reps. That's not too shabby. Bonus round. Now let's take a look at a couple exercises you can use the iron boots for that aren't mentioned in the York Leg Developing Course. closing of the course, it says, quote, the iron boot exercises are exclusively York. York was the first to develop this device. And then it reminds us that you are as old as your legs, which is a little bit different than the introduction, by the way. In the introduction, it kept saying that a man is as good as his legs. So, something changed from the beginning to the end. We went from quality to age, but I suppose they're in the same wheelhouse. And like many other York Barbell courses, this would be reproduced year after year, so I doubt that it changed too much. If you have a more recent copy of this, this was from around 1950, this particular copy, and there are significant changes, let me know, drop a comment. Even as I sit here, my legs are sore and my core is sore in a good way and in a way that it has not been in a while because clearly I'm doing movements with these iron boots that I'm not used to. And I think that's the best thing about them in my opinion is that you can do movements that you don't traditionally do in most lifting disciplines. And in turn, doing those unconventional movements will strengthen and stabilize the bigger movements that you probably already do, whether you're a power lifter, a bodybuilder, strongman, whatever strength discipline you're pursuing. So whether it's just for general fitness or whether it's as an accessory movement, I would highly suggest getting a pair of vintage iron boots. If you'd rather have something more modern, then check out the Home Gym History episode of this 
Because Jake and Adam and I go through a lot of modern takes on this classic fitness product. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please drop a comment and let me know. Are you going to pursue getting a pair of vintage iron boots? Do you already have a pair? Or uh, is this not for you? And why? You're not going to offend me. I'm curious. So please drop a comment, like the video, subscribe, all that happy stuff. And of course, if you want to support the channel, the best way to do so is to spread the word about the channel, tell a lot of people to check out my videos, watch some of the older videos, and buy any supplies you might need or some cool products that you might want through the links that are on my website and in the description of this video. Thanks for watching. Old weights, new gains.